Hey, we're back. Thank you, as always, for the like, the comment, the subscribe, the reviews, and all that jazz. We're back. Better than ever. New year. Same energy. It's the Coming Clean Podcast. Coming right at you. Hi, this is Alex M. And this is Morgan S. And you're listening to Coming Clean Podcast with Sam and Marty. Can I get down like this? This is the Coming Clean. Coming Clean Podcast. Coming get down like that. Here we go. Let's see if we still got it. Hello and welcome to the Coming Clean Podcast, your retrospective podcast about MTV's iconic shows, Laguna Beach. But as you know, we are talking about the hills. It's episode 53. Welcome back. Happy New Year. As always, I am the bro that runs the show. My name is Marty. And with, who's with me as always? The man with the face of a Hollywood read, but I can't read or speak. <laughs> Clearly. Because this is a new year. <laughs> Got to get the cobwebs out. <laughs> Practice game. It's preseason. We're back at this. <laughs> well, what, what a great start to, to a new year. But yes, it's Sam with me. He's a big boy. He sure is. The biggest boy I know. Wow, that well, sounded weird. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I did eat a lot over... Christmas and the holiday break, but you know, that's pretty offensive. I thought we were friends. Oh, my, my bad, my bad. Well, you know, let's uh, let's stop the awkwardness and get into some headlines. The Hills Headlines. All right. What, first of all, happy birthday to our boy Jason. Oh, hold on. Again? Is it? <laughs> well, I we, feel like it's always been his, his birthday. birthday episode, but I think it's like officially his birthday. Yeah, January eleventh, uh, turning yeah. forty-one. Hey, nice. Uh, I did not queue up the applause. Um, Happy birthday <laughs> to you. I can't find the applause. Oh, hey, if anybody wants to, uh, clearly we're rusty, but yes, go yeah. on. Turns out, if you go to the Twitter, uh, Jason Whaler at Whaler Jason, uh. When it's their birthday, little balloons fly in there. That was fun. Oh, yeah. So, happy birthday. Happy 31st. Uh, we're, we're getting close to that. I just took one step closer to turning 30. So, yeah. 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 We'll, we'll, we'll pass on over that. Yeah. Um, so, anything else from the cast happened over the past, what, three weeks that we were out? Uh, I don't think much. Just, you know... Babies are being born. Nothing, no new babies, but they're growing. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. Nothing much. Um, yeah, not that I heard of. Nothing huge. Um, obviously, yeah. Spencer's still posting fire on the Snapchat, King of Snapchat. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what else could be bigger than all the the baby buzz. I don't know what's left. Right. Um, maybe Low or yeah, Low I'd, Morgan S. Some people from the cast of season three, um, which we don't discuss. Yeah, um, yeah. Who? Although one of our reviews said we'd get a six star if we discuss <laughs> season three, so we might have to work on that. But thank you to everyone who has been, you know, shooting over the five star ratings and reviews. By the way, shouts to you guys. Um, and all, of course, thank you for listening. All right, we're trying to get all the catchphrases in. Um, but yeah, if you haven't noticed, we have rebranded. Uh, we debuted that in our last episode, uh, so go check that out. Some nice bright colors, and if you like the branding and you want to rep the pod, go ahead and go to teespring.com slash stores, that's with an S, slash coming clean pod, 
to get the to get our logo on a t-shirt get some get some coming clean pod you know greatest hits uh we're still thinking of other things that we can put on t-shirts so if you have any suggestions at coming clean pod facebook twitter instagram wherever you may be and of course you can find us on all the podcast platforms including spotify because we're popping like that and now the video version to see us you know not really emote (laughs) when we talk it's not that exciting i would say (laughs) stick to any form you got (laughs) um but yeah uh where, however you want to watch us or listen to us, we got you covered. And if we're missing something, let us know again at Coming Clean Pod. And we've talked enough about this. It's episode 53, officially a year's worth of episodes. So congrats to us. Can't believe we're congr- I'm congratulating ourselves. I am patting myself on the back for sticking with something so long. Yes, this is probably the most we've committed. Well, I guess you have your relationship or whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but besides our own friendship, this is probably yeah. the longest thing we've committed to. Our uh, our dance crew didn't last this long. No, uh, when we tried being DJs, that <laughs> lasted a full one hour. <laughs> yeah, because we got yelled at. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, you know, so several attempts at being YouTube celebs by eating canned foods. <laughs> video video yet to be released so stay tuned yeah if we if we ever hit 100 episodes and maybe like 200,000 listen subscribers then we'll release some unseen footage of us eating dog food so that's a challenge world (laughs) embrace debate yes um all right as this episode is called enough is enough we're going on off track here let's talk the highlights of season two, episode eight of The Hills. The Hills highlights. All right. Um. So episode eight. So where we left off last episode was where? What happened in episode seven? Well, tensions are high between Elsie and Heidi. Mm-hmm. Um. Jen Bunny just hooked up with Brody, even though Lauren was still seeing her. Him. Him. And Spencer and LC don't get along. And Shocker. she believe and they she believes that Spencer is driving a wedge between her and Heidi, even though they're best friends. Right. Um what else? Whitney's still working, mm-hmm. going right along. Mm-hmm. Um she's excel she seems to be excelling more and more at her position. Correct. And Elsie's kind of she's doing fine too. Yeah, she's, she's doing well. She's all right. All uh, right. And oh, oh and Audrina's oh, yeah. hanging out with Elsie. She's yes. back in the crew. Correct, correct. Yes. So, all right, let's start off. So, we'll go character by character. No, um, not necessarily any massive moments here. No, this is this was definitely like a setup episode for something big that's going to happen. Yep. Uh, filler episode transitioning the story. Not very good storylines. Um, yeah, uh, so let's we can off, talk about. But. Yeah, uh, let's talk about. So Elsie, you know, trying to put her troubles behind her. You know, she's got beef with Heidi, uh, and she's fresh off a little bit of a, you know, a, a double a double whammy from last time with the whole Brody Brody and Bunny thing. Um, so now she's going on a double date with Audrina and the two gentlemen whose names I cannot remember. Well, Chris is Audrina's guy, okay. and then her his friend is a hockey player friend named Blake. Yes, not uh, the Blake I, who played for the Colorado Avalanche in 1997. Rob Blake? I, I don't. <laughs> I don't sure. know. For um, sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> I think Rob Blake isn't Rob Blake Colombo. I don't. I don't know. Let us know at Coming Clean Pod. Uh, Bla- Bla- Blake Shelton. <laughs> so Ro- there is a hockey player, Rob Blake. There he was go. Canadian. Oh, there you go. He played for but, the Avalanche in the ni- late nineties. No, he played for the Sharks. Oh, well. You're you're going off track. Maybe you're the problem. My bad. Um. All right. So double date with these two gentlemen and. Uh, okay, first of all, it was not the greatest vibe to begin with. It was a little awkward. 
Yeah, where did they go? I think they went to like the W Hotel. Like they went to a yeah, really, like really a, nice like restaurant. restaurant within a hotel, like one of those things where yeah. there's probably like a famous chef. Um, so you know, uh, it was a little, a little awkward, and yeah. I mean, I, I feel like it's standard first date, double date, all in one. Um, uh, we, as we know, Audrina is not the best conversationalist right, from exactly. we've seen from her past dates. Mm-hmm. Uh. But then, you know, the, like trying Blake to break was, the ice. Yeah, like he, like he trying like to break the ice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brutal! Just Blake and everything. <laughs> um, talking about dessert, which you know can't blame him if the desserts look good. Which I couldn't tell if he w- it was trying to be like innu- innuendo kind of thing, or he was yeah. trying actually really wanted dessert. Right, because when he first said it, it sounded lo- just like oh, the desserts look good, and then yeah. the way then they he w- cut it, yeah. Like, made I don't it know seem was... like, oh, let's get dessert right. first and then yeah. get out of here. Because he right. kept saying he wasn't hungry and then yeah. so, I don't know what's going on there. So, uh, I mean, well, I I don't know the background of these two guys, but, you know, uh, Audrina and LC just, yeah, we've been here before when they're like, oh, this is awesome. Like, have you guys yeah. been here before? They're like yeah. freaking out at how fancy it was. And they're both like, yeah, we're like here every week. <laughs> it's like if we went on a double date with like, minor celebrities and right. went to like i don't know like ruth chris or like arby's and we're like whoa <laughs> arby's you been to arby's before get they out of here the meats <laughs> <laughs> not a sponsor have you ever had that horsey sauce like hopefully they come around and show us yo horsey sauce is killer and so are their curly fries again not a sponsor but we will gladly show for arby's <laughs> For free I'll fries, pay. like if you send me a bag of like frozen fries, I'll give you like a month's worth of free shout outs. Yeah, you got a, you got a friend for life. <laughs> yeah. Um, so where were we? Oh, so the other thing that was weird was, again, I don't know Blake's background. Also, first of all, he looks like if Talon was like in a tub for like a <laughs> while and then he just absorbed all the water. He's just like a larger version of Talon. Like a yeah, kind of yeah, and like his personality kind of like kind of goofy. Yeah. Like where he's like trying to be suave but it doesn't really come across but it like works. <laughs> yeah. Um so yeah, but when he was talking about I wonder if they walk around with the dessert carts. I was like, are you in like a 1950s steakhouse? Right? right? <laughs> Like either a push cart or like the you bring the whole tray out like an yeah. Italian restaurant. Yeah, like, what? Where do you think you are? Yeah, are you at like Mario's? Do you see like red carpet out there to cover the red wine stains? No, this is L.A. Like this is in uh, <laughs> where? What was our favorite place that uh, down in Laguna? Oh, um, uh, um Not, uh, pasta pomodoro. Pasta pomodoro. Yeah, pasta pomodoro has <laughs> probably got. A cart of desserts that fly around. Just like several kinds of tiramisu. All, all flavors. Yeah, just tiramisu and cannolis everywhere. Um, now I'm getting hungry. Now I want dessert. <laughs> um, so the the funniest part about, well, I, I guess not funny, but the most interesting part of this was uh, the conversation was not engaging. Um, Blake was trying his hardest, and Chris jumps in with... Yo, I I saw this. I met this Spencer dude, and they make the faces, and then Blake makes the sarcastic. Oh, sounds like a great guy, and that's yeah. like LC. That's like the best thing you could, the greatest pickup line you could tell LC at that point. Yeah, and like uh, Chris gave kind of a little scoop down on Spencer. Was like he doesn't seem that good, like cool of a guy. Didn't like his vibe and whatnot. So yeah. Spencer seems to be having a reputation flowing around L.A. Yeah. Or but you when, know, these but when you're friends with up. the Prince of L.A. and you guys are <laughs> rolling around, you know, going to clubs, mm-hmm. people got to know who you are. And I mean, for our per- like, I don't know if we were in that position. Dibs on being Blake. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm the I'm I'm the friend that has no job. <laughs> oh, that Chris I know is jobless. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just pretending. Also, a hockey player, like, uh, like, what kind I mean, of hockey? Like, yeah, exactly. Like, I play soccer occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going around saying I'm a soccer player. If that would be your title, occasional <laughs> yeah. soccer player. <laughs> when it's warm and, <laughs> but yeah, has, yeah, can we do a background check on Blake? We can do an update on <laughs> Twitter later. Uh, 
But yeah, don't know if he was actually a pro hockey player or he just the first time Audrina met him was after a pickup hockey game, and she just went with it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm pretty jealous. Good yeah. for them. It's like when I'm bored on a plane and I tell, and the person next to me is getting chatty and they ask me what I do, I just say professional wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> I'm work. I'm working up through the indies right now. Yeah, um, but okay. So that ha- so you know, trashing Spencer has become the national pastime of Southern California. Uh, don't know if I agree with that because, you know. I mean, we'll, we'll get we'll get to that. Uh, Spencer gets a bad rap, and we're going to stick on this. That it's hard to people who have very strong feelings about Spencer during the Hills. And right. I think we've come to this realization that maybe it's not completely warranted. Yes. Um, yeah. Cause yeah, I, I would assume that even since we're kayfabe only, we would have been on the train that, yo know, anti Spencer all the way, but even the way they edit it, I just don't know what happened in 2007 that made us turn against them. Real, I guess the love for LC was just too too much. Yeah, it's almost disrespectful that they would do something like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so do we move on to Heidi and Spencer now that we're done with LC and Audrina for now? Um, I think it seems like just to go, LC has been trying to look for a guy's guy, a normal guy's guy. Right. And seems like she found it in Blake. Blake yeah. definitely should have asked for a number, yeah, but <laughs> Chris, Chris knows Audrina. Mm-hmm. Audrina knows Chris. Uh-huh. It's okay. You can they they at the end of the day they ended up swing swinging uh swinging well <laughs> <laughs> swinging another date at That's the a, end um, of dinner after browsers. <laughs> after one of our Heidi does Lauren kind of dirty. Is. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about that then. So Heidi. You know, talking about um, going on a little uh, trip with Spencer to Santa Barbara. Shout outs. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, they're sort of, I guess they want to make it appear, they by they I mean Elsie and Heidi, that they're the bigger woman and are trying like to. Both make of amends. them are trying? Yeah. Okay. It, like at face value. Okay. Um, because they're like, oh, we haven't had, like, we haven't hung out. We should find time to hang out. You know, kind of the kind of things that you say to like people you go to summer camp with and don't really mean. Yeah, um, yeah. Like you're you're walking on the street of New York. You run into somebody right. like, oh, well, I haven't seen in a long time. We should catch up. And you're like, yeah, yeah we yeah. should. <laughs> not expecting. Yep. No, I do not. <laughs> Please don't call. Don't text. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the uh, official stance of Sam. Don't call no text, but please reach out to us at Coming Clean Pod. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Heidi, you know, um, going out with Spencer. Uh, well, going to the trip with Spencer, having a good time there by the beach. Um, and do they have a cabin, or they just got a hotel or something? Right. I believe. From what I, I think, Spencer's mom has a place down there. I don't know if this was later on or whatnot, but I think he ha- they have a relative that lives in Santa Barbara. Oh, just from per his Snapchats and stuff like that. Oh. Like they ended up later on live. I think living down in Santa Barbara, maybe. Not totally positive, but I would don't don't quote me. I w- I would love to live in Santa Barbara for the record. Yeah, they have a nice lagoon. I almost went to college there. But I didn't apply or <laughs> didn't, didn't get it. Oh, man. Yeah. I mean, like, I almost went to Harvard, too, but I didn't apply. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Hey. So, okay. Let's talk about Heidi. You mentioned this. Heidi doing LC a little dirty. Yeah. So, leading up to this moment, um, Heidi and Lauren haven't had a lot of alone time together. Um, they're still, after the big fight, they're like, all right, like, let's keep Elsie and Spencer separate and Heidi's just going to have to learn to break it off with Spencer a little bit and try to spend more time with Lauren and vice versa. Lauren seems to be always available whenever Heidi needs, but Heidi seems to, something comes up, Heidi goes off with Spencer. Right. Um, as when they set up this date to go, they're, they're supposed to come back on Sunday. 
So Elsie and Heidi agreed that they were going to do a date on Monday to do like nails and go to dinner and do it all up like the how they used to. Yep. However, that fails. Um, for some odd reason, it seems like maybe Elsie got back late or I don't know how they. Yeah, because Heidi know how was already was coming back late. So the day plan was done. Yes. And, and they were still going to do was dinner out. at seven. Right. And then Elsie didn't hear from Heidi because she was at work. And then Heidi comes back and decides to just go on a movie date with Spencer. And yep. Which he got red vines, which is, I feel like a wild move. <laughs> It but, was around the time when um, that the first SNL digital short about uh, the Chronicles of Narnia oh, was out, and they classic. were like, "Mr. Pip and Red Vines is crazy delicious." So he was probably yeah. just living, living that life. <laughs> <laughs> that red lines, that red vines life. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, so he, she, Heidi picks. Uh, she's really just showing her that okay, I'm gonna pick the guy over my friend. And, you know, it's like she left a note, right? And this isn't 2004. Like, you, you have a phone. You have a site. Yeah, like, send a send text. Send a text. Like, yo, um, going to go see a movie. Probably going to go out after if you want to mm-hmm. hang. But, yeah, it's like that would have been, ugh. It's just a pet peeve of mine. It, it makes no sense. If you're going to flake, at least be, like, a woman yeah. about it. Yeah, straight up. Like, straight up ahead of time Mm -hmm. something or i'm coming back late like it doesn't take that long to t9 that right so a com uh uh a courtesy text would have been appreciated so yeah not a fan of that move by heidi that's uh that's kind of like when um uh not a lot of people know this but when we lived together we had a third and a fourth roommate and that fourth roommate decided that he couldn't pay rent anymore and when we tried to help him out, I got him back home from work the next day, and his stuff's gone. <laughs> Shocked. I've never <laughs> seen a room so empty. It was crazy. <laughs> I was like, all my stuff is here, and uh, the other half of the room is empty. <laughs> what well, has th- happened? Thanks for the free TV. Oh, yeah, I still got that. <laughs> and I think like a mop or something, maybe a vacuum cleaner. I'm not totally sure. No, that was uh, uh, yeah. our guest. Another one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, other ge- other guests we've had. Yeah, but that's for our ra- rambling podcast when we just talk about our college days. But, okay, so anything else with Heidi before we so move on? I, I, I want to pose this question. Okay. Because it kind of spoke to me and made me question things. Spencer bring, brought up an interesting point <laughs> when he was trying to get Heidi to go to Santa Barbara. He was saying, or maybe when they were coming back, was that, if Lauren was still dating Jason and Jason came up with something and Lauren would, would Lauren end up still dropping Heidi to go do that thing with Jason and break off their play date or would she be there for Heidi and like stick to what she planned? That's a good question. Um, by him and you. Yes. And I think, I feel like a lot of people might defend Lauren or mm-hmm. LC saying that, oh no, she would go hang out with Heidi. Like she's a good friend, right. all this stuff. And I was trying to think back in a <clears throat> previous episode where has there been a situation where it, similar things happen? Like she want, she was going to hang out with Jason. They right. did something else separate. Ooh. Was there? And left Heidi. I, I don't know. I was trying to, I was trying to think back. Um, I mean, <sighs> Heidi was there for her when she wanted to leave. Elsie wanted to leave the party when right. Jason was all drunk on New Year's, and right. then she went. She went with Elsie, like yep. as a friend. Yep. I um, mean, I, I could assume Elsie would do the same thing back, but in terms of having a relationship, we never got to see it or prove if Spencer was wrong or not. Right. So there's, uh, I have like two answers to this. One okay. where I think what the producers want us to believe about Elsie, which is that she would be a good mm-hmm. friend about it. Yep. No further explanation needed there. But what I think would have gone down had a situation like that happened. And it was like of equal magnitude. Um, you know, Heidi knows the history, so not a big fan of Jason, Jason yep. and Elsie sort of in a good spot in their relationship, getting serious. If he, um, asked her on a trip, 
to Mammoth or something like that. I think Elsie would have gone and canceled her plans with Heidi, but she would have left the courtesy text. Oh, okay. I think it's that, like that little that little detail. Yeah, that little uh, detail that Elsie, which is kind of seeming in their personality of what we've seen, that um, Elsie is yeah, like they might be on the same wavelength, but maybe Elsie's I don't want to say more aware, but Heidi can be kind of you know up higher. Right. Than I'll see. Maybe yeah. not thinking fully through. Yeah, so that's my take. What do you think? No, I think that's a it's a very good take. I agree with it. I was just trying to you know, stir the pot a little bit. Yeah. I I th- I don't think I think Spencer makes a good point that a lot of people in relationships and whatnot usually choose most likely the significant other over right. doing things. I mean, unless some I mean you people can be in a very good relationship where you can kind of have both and it's just being, you know, honest with the people. Yeah, so I think so here's where I think the difference would would fall. Like if it was a trip, like the Santa Barbara thing, I think Elsie would have picked Santa Barbara, but I don't think she would have ditched Heidi for a movie. Yes. Because you can do the, a movie yeah. whenever. Yeah, yeah. The 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 that whole movie thing is it just does not look good on Heidi's part just yes. to go there. Agreed. Yeah. Um, all right, so we'll we'll see the aftermath of this, or or not even the aftermath, when the climax of this probably next week. We don't know. Kayfabe only. We're still in this point in time. All right, uh, last little thing here. Whitney and LC getting more projects for Teen Vogue. Uh, looks like Lisa's trusting them more and assigns them with also a Lauren, right? Another Lauren? Yes, uh, La- Lauren. Lauren. L-A- L A W R E N. <laughs> yes. So Lauren. Another, another Lauren, Lauren, Lauren issue. <laughs> so Lauren, that sounds weird. Lauren is a bit of a type A personality. She knows what she wants. She's uh, organized. She's to the point. I feel like a typical like New York Vogue because she. Yeah. I think she's from New York too, right? I think so. Yeah. A typical like, but not like an intern. Like, no, but like a typical New York Vogue like prototype right. trying well, to be let's like get an, it done. An, yeah, try to be like an Anna Wintour, right? Esque. Um, so, which I think she had work for her. So, yeah, part of yeah, I think because I think um, what's her face? Whitney was talking about her background of all her experience. Um, so they get assigned to work a photo shoot with them, uh, a teen photo shoot, obviously because it's Teen Vogue. Uh, Whitney's sister gets cast, and off they go, and. Uh, Whitney feeling underappreciated at work. Yeah, which I kind of don't blame her in a sense that... She's tired of steaming. Yes, she started doing interim work, and I didn't realize that she's been doing that for five years. Oh, did she say five years? Yeah, she's been an intern for five years. Oof, that's so, repug. Yeah, like, I don't know, did you start, I guess, maybe 18 out of college? Right. So she's probably, like, 22 school, yeah. at the time, Yep. I think, or, I don't know, maybe, she, do you start in high school? Like, I don't, it, I don't know what the role was, but, yeah, she's been, I'm pretty sure she's had five years, which is, like, a pretty long time to be interning and not have a full-time job. I know she's still in school, so maybe that's the hang-up, right. the issue, because you can't, it, but. Um, it looks like know. she's. So she was. She's six foot tall. Yeah, she's she's a tall lady. Um, so she was born in eighty five. LC was born in eighty six. Oh, it's just a year. So yeah, mm. maybe yeah, uh, maybe as a freshman in college she started. Yeah, or, yeah. Well, I mean, it's Teen Vogue. Maybe she got it as like oh, a teen. high school, like a teen kind of thing. Right. So um, we're just speculating. Yes, uh, Whitney, if you want to let us know at Coming Clean Pod, and thank you for possibly listening. <coughs> Will we get that to the city? Good. Who knows? Maybe. It's a long season. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, we get to their uh, issue, or, you know, it goes goes pretty smoothly for the most part, and until we have to pack up and leave. Yeah. Uh, it's a little intense, yeah, that got kind of awkward. Yeah, uh, it seems like Whitney has a going away dinner for her sister. 
and is her Lauren sister like off like, to college or something? She must be going. Back. I don't think she lived in L.A. Oh. I think she must have lived somewhere else. So she must have been flying out. Right. Um, oh, okay. And Lauren kind of put the foot down and be like, you got to get your work done. Mm -hmm. Lauren. Lauren, uh, which as we get older, like, I don't know. I kind of feel pretty bad. Like, I feel like you got to let her go. LC was a great friend. Yep. Like, all right, don't worry. Like, I'll I'll cover for you. Right. That's what friends do. Yep. Um, and Whitney would have done exactly the same thing, too. Yeah, it's just tough to be in that situation. It's like when yeah. you have to get something done, you don't want to stay late. But if right. you are like the manager of it, like sometimes you, you know, you got to have people. Sometimes you got to allow things. Yeah, it's one of those things um, like handled differently. Obviously, we're a little bit more advanced in our careers. Uh, that that's, that would have yeah. been, especially since it was a planned thing. And it's it's one of those things where you're like, I'll come in early to set up. Yeah. LC can come in late and I'll stay. Day, I'll leave at six and then Elsie can cover the rest of it to kind of even it out, but yeah. at least establish that, Hey, I have a hard stop. Yeah. And this, and she's an intern. Like, yeah, it's, right. you're an intern. Like let, let, let her go. Yeah. You know, um, if she was like a, a associate, like a full-time employee, yeah, maybe you got, yeah, yeah that's kind of, you can't really spring. I have a dinner. Like you kind of have to tell ahead of time, but yep. being an intern, like you should have a hard stop at six. Yeah, unless yeah, unless you're getting paid, or unless you're on salary, or there's like, mm -hmm. or you agree that yeah. you know we're gonna get paid time yeah. and a half or something. And working for a magazine, like, I mean, this print ad, print ad, like whatever print media is probably slowly declining at this point. <laughs> yeah. um, it definitely was like an unpaid internship. I'm assuming. No, especially if oh. they're like they're all year. No, yeah, I guess and, so. Yeah, and good point. Through the, uh, except the summer. Oh no, because she went to Paris for the summer, right? So, yeah, I must. I hope they're paid. Like I feel so bad. <laughs> if they like, I know they're a little bit more well off, but yeah, even at, when I was an intern, was getting paid like I don't know, nine seventy five, ten bucks an hour. That yeah, was so. a bit of a struggle. Yeah, and, and living in L.A., going to school. Yeah, Ooh, rough life. Yeah. Right, uh, anything else with oh also before we wrap up the highlights um do, uh, conspiracy theory since you were starting oh. the part early earlier can i start the pot a little bit here that was me <laughs> sipping my tea i thought you were taking like a puff out of an imaginary joint no the, no, the cup <laughs> oh oh yeah tea time tea time <laughs> uh it's about to get spilt um so do you think this is whitney's way of using the internship to talk about her role on the TV show, where she's she wants more uh, you, airtime. You, oh, you, you think <laughs> subtly, subtly mentioning? Yeah, that I she need, wants. I need more. more style opportunities. Yeah, she um, wants more cam time, man. It could be. Yeah, I mean, clearly it transitioned into the hills. I mean, uh, to the city at some yeah, point. Because I think I, she's smart enough soon. to do that. Yeah, I think it's after this year. Or yeah. Maybe like season three or middle of yeah. season three. So, yeah, or where she had kind of like a joint role, like New York City, and they had the city going on at the same yeah. time. I That's think. why they brought in Lowe and stuff, too. Yeah. So, I think, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I, can't, I, I can't believe it. Yeah. Subtle hints. Yeah, because, I mean, she played it off pretty innocently, but I think she's smart enough to parlay that. Yeah, definitely. She want, she wanted that next year's contract. She knows it's coming up. True, true. All right. Uh, anything else here before we we take a quick break? Uh, I just that I think the fashion industry is just not for me. <laughs> All right. Good thing you're not on there. <laughs> but also just, same. Just threw it out there. Even the um. Although I did get the uh, the good tips on how to hang a shirt on a hanger. And and actually had to properly steam something from the inside. Yeah, I never real, never knew that. Yeah, um, but yeah, I I just never knew the logic where you want to have it facing. Well, I guess depending on your handedness, but typically you want it you want the front of the shirt facing left so that when you flip through it like a book, you see the front. Just I was like, I did not know that. It's good to know. <laughs> simple, simple, simple things. Simple things. You you learn you learn something new every day. And on the Coming Clean podcast. And you know what? Uh, 
maybe you want to learn how to get some merch to rep the podcast. Um, and that's our sponsor for today, ourselves, the Coming Clean Podcast merch store. The link is in the description, but I'll say it right now. It's teespring.com slash stores slash Coming Clean Pod. Go get a t-shirt with our logo on it. Go get a squad t-shirt. Are you repping Team Alex M or are you repping Team Kristen? I know I am Team Alex M all the way. All right, where where are we now? All right, links are in the description for that one. So let's move on to the segment that's unwritten by first naming our MVP of the week. Clap your hands with me. It's the MVP, MVP. of the week. You have a puzzled look on your face. Do you want to go first or do you want me to take this? You can take this. I'm going to go with Blake. (laughs) I wasn't going to, but after talking through just the sheer effort that he did to... It was... Okay, the the odds were not in... Clearly, he had no idea of any of the context around any of the drama. Maybe Chris had a little bit of an idea, but not really. But between Audrina being as interesting as a bag of nails and LC just not being in the right frame of mind or mood, he it was a Herculean effort that he did to turn that conversation around and make it somewhat of a successful double day that LC actually had a good time. Yeah, I mean, he really lucked out of being getting set up with LC, yeah. like one of the top, you know... Uh, Most eligible bachelorettes. There you go. <laughs> of LA at the time. Oh, you think if any of these uh, cast members were still single right now, they would be on like The Bachelorette or The Bachelor? <sighs> like, I know if one Talon would, was single, one he would, would have done it. Yeah. One would only hope. <laughs> oh, man. Morgan S, don't do it because <laughs> I will Dream join. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, who is your MVP? I'm going to go with. Audrina. Oh. As as we talked through that whole thing, like you said, to get Blake to the actual get Blake to the <laughs> table itself, how to go through Audrina. Audrina, great matchmaker. Oh, the Scotty. I hope, hope hopefully we can see more of that in the future. Yeah, I, I'm actually very excited to see more of Audrina um, once she. We know she gets into some beef and drama, so uh, she's just uh, she's Vesuvius ready, ready to explode. <laughs> yeah, I, she's really going to come into her own in season three, I feel like. Yeah. I really hope so. Very, very excited. All right, from the good to the bad, it's time to enter the Jabron Zone. Jabroni, J-A-B-R-O-N-I, X-Y-Z, A-B-C. Oh, it doesn't matter how you spell Jabroni. <laughs> Okay, you can keep saying that and make yourself think you're a, a good person, but you're a I bad mean, I person. I didn't do anything wrong. All right, who was the baddest person of the episode? I'm going to go with La- Lauren. Ooh. Jabroni. Why, why Lauren? I don't know. I, she was just kind of mean. I, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't really like it. Yeah, she was like... really mean to Heidi. Like, she was really just snippy at Heidi and like kind of like, I mean, uh, not Heidi, Whitney. Um, Whitney was like, here, give me these. Do you have these? Right. Like, why didn't you do? Like, she was too, uh, too high strong. No, high. Well, high strong is good. Um, what's uh, micromanaging? Right. Yeah, and there's one. It's one thing to be like a micromanager, but still sort of be respectful. She she was kind of just mean to them. Yeah. Like even like Lisa exudes authority, and mm-hmm. she knows what she wants, and she's firm, and she's stern about it, and. Elsie and Whitney know and are used to it, but she still comes off as like, no, you work for me, but I respect that I need to mentor you through this. But yeah, she was like just treating them like, no, do this, do, like children. Yeah, and she's been around a lot longer. Right. Like, yeah, I don't. Part of I feel like, like I feel like Lauren. I you know she might have has done a lot of jobs, but like you're still probably not as tenured as. Lisa, no, I mean, yeah. A lot of, yeah, like a lot of people are like an Anna Wintour. Like she's, she's done this for so long and that's like her stick. And I feel like she's just like, that's her thing. Like everybody just knows how to deal with it. 
Right, because she, she could have been like, um, who was that? That designer was also very Type A and knew what she wanted, mm. but yes, she was she, nice. That yeah. yeah, she was really nice. Blaine's nice. Blaine, Blaine is nice. Blaine's a nice guy. We haven't <laughs> seen any Blaine this year. Yeah, need more Blaine. Hashtag need more Blaine. Didn't get signed up. <laughs> yeah, couldn't couldn't agree the talent fee. He wanted more airtime. <laughs> um, uh, okay, I'm going to go. With, uh, I'm gonna go with Heidi. Just cause, Jabroni. You know, like I said, you yeah. can't you can't be a, f- uh, especially to your best friend, you can't flake and not leave at least a courtesy text. Mm-hmm. Just a little something. Mm-hmm. Who who even writes notes? I like, I don't yeah, know. I, I don't think I even have a pen around here. Yeah, like the only person who used to write notes was like my parents when they would leave, and then I would come back home. We're not here. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like uh, preheat the oven to four twenty-five and put in the ZD. <laughs> Thanks, Mama Stouffer's. Figure it out. <laughs> not a sponsor, but ooh, I had to do some Stouffer's baked ZD right now. No, Just gonna know. walk out. Yeah. Um. All right. Any final thoughts on this episode before we move on? Uh, it, it was an okay episode. I think next week we're going to have a lot to talk about, hopefully. And yes. I'm ready for some fireworks. All right, here we go. Back better than ever. It's also time to question your knowledge about a day gone by. I think you need to step in front of Justin and put the Duke's on, dude. I think you should come out here, right here, and come talk to me like that. It's trivia time. March 5th, 2007 is what we are talking about. Our electronic copy says I am in the lead twenty four to twenty. Is that true? Yeah. I don't know. This yeah. is like who's no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I had a bad week. We were going two and two each time, and I think yeah. I had a really bad week. Oh. All right. Well, you know the again. This is like who's line where the points don't matter. Yeah, the points don't really matter. I'm pretty sure we've lost count after like four because it's very difficult to know the numbers after that. And we always forget who's doing questions each week. Yes. Um, So hopefully when I made the mistake earlier in the week of telling you that you should have gotten questions, you did not look at these questions yet. Um, But yeah, here we go. We got some good questions here. Are you ready? Yes. All right, here we go. Question number one. Some people see this habit as comforting, but it can apparently ruin your teeth. Well, people usually see quitting this as age six as the normal age to quit this bad habit. The LA Times reported that on this on this day that you should quit earlier. What is this bad habit? Is it thumb sucking? Yeah, it is. I would have also accepted cigarette smoking. <laughs> <laughs> with that, with that one, uh, with like one town that. It's like common for like kids. Oh to yeah, smoke the baby, the, the, yeah. the giant baby who's addicted Appar- to cigarettes. Apparently, it's like a common thing in that one town. Yeah. Oh, also, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's like big part of the culture. Yeah, which makes zero sense. But <laughs> all right, one from one, off to a hot start in this new year. Are you ready for question two? Let's do it. All right, here we go. According to the Journal of Youth and Adolescence. Doing this at an earlier age increases your chances of stealing, destroying property, or selling drugs by 26%. Wait, a trait? Well, if you do this at an earlier age, it increases your chances of that. Oh. Um, is it thumb sucking? <laughs> no. Ah. It is losing your virgine. Oh, good to know. Yeah, that's why we are not vandals, thieves, or (laughs) drug dealers. So dumb. Oh, this is recording? Oh, crap. Okay. All right. Question number three. Your boy, David Pendergraft, led his school to a win over San Diego with 22 points in the semifinals of the West Coast Conference Tournament. Setting up a date with Santa Clara, what was this team? UCLA? Uh, 
It was Gonzaga. Uh, I don't know who David Pendergraph is. Oh, what? Also, uh, West Coast Conference, man. No idea. Uh, UCLA's in the Pac-10. Oh. All right. Question number four. One for three. That hot start quickly burned out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Over four. This game was a bloody mess as North Carolina beat their arch rivals Duke, securing the top seed in the ACC tournament. They were led by 26 points, 17 rebounds, and a bloody eyebrow from this psychotic forward. Is it Psycho T. Tyler Hansborough? Yes, it is. Where, where's he at? I think he's still in Toronto. Oh, nice. Um, all right. Six man. Two for four. Two for four. Here we go. One last question to cut my lead down to one, allegedly. Are you ready? Yep. Speaking of college stars, Ben Gordon scored 48 points to lead the Chicago Bulls over the Milwaukee Bucks. While he was the star for the winning team, his career high was overshadowed by 52 points from his colorful counterpart in Milwaukee. Who was the guy? Ben Gordon? Yeah, Ben Gordon, who was the guard in Milwaukee who scored 52 points. Is it Brandon Jennings? His colorful counterpart. (laughs) Colorful counterpart. It's not Brandon Jennings, but I'll give you a chance. Um, Ron Artest. (laughs) (laughs) Michael Red. Oh, man, that guy was classic. Yeah. Three-point three point master. Yeah. All right, so two? two? Yeah. Yes, I Rocking got two. the two once again. <laughs> classic. 24 classic to Sam. 22. Yes. All right. Um, well, that brings us to our closing. But before that, we got to give recommendations to the good people. New year, new recommendations. What are you giving them to do this week? I am suggesting, um, you know what I've been doing? I've been watching The Sopranos. I, I went back. I never classic. watched the, um, it is a classic show. Never watched it. If you get Amazon Prime, you get it for free on Prime. Um, or like HBO, right? If you have HBO. Yeah, or if you have HBO. It's a, it's a, it's very interesting watching back The Sopranos um, nowadays with a lot of political correctness because oh. it. It's not very politically correct in nowadays. Um, Twenty eighteen can't be problematic. Yeah. Yes, it's a it's a pretty interesting uh, look back in time, but it is a good show. It's what I years were know. those on? It was like ninety nine. Oh wow, that's so like, a long time ago. Yeah, to two like two thousand because it it was I think season two or three was started uh, right after nine eleven. Ah, uh, well, there you so, go, classic show. Yeah, it's a weird trip back in time, but, you know, it's something for you to do. If you haven't watched it, you might as well watch it. All right. R.A.P. R.A.P. James Gandolfini. Oh, yes, true. Um, I have no sound effect for that. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Um, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I don't okay. know. No? All right. No. Well, all right, we've been gone for three weeks, and I've actually been collecting. You gave two recommendations last time we were here. I'm yeah. actually going to give three recommendations. Oh, my God. Whoa, nice. <laughs> Just to catch the good people up. The first one is also a TV show called The Good Place, Thursday nights on NBC. I'm actually missing it right now, but it's all good because I don't have cable. <laughs> <laughs> So I have to watch it online tomorrow. Got um, this. A good show, Kristen Bell, my fave. Kristen Bell, the God Ten Dancing is on there. You know, just uh, just a really well written show. Super smart, especially for a network show. Uh, highly recommend it, especially to Jacksonville Jaguars fans. Um, second one is Rayo's Pasta Sauce. Just. <laughs> I'm not. I'm usually not a big fan of prepackaged foods, but I couldn't find basil one day, so I just bought Rayos because I heard good things, and it is like flying first class for the first time, especially if you compare it to the other pasta sauces that I will not name because they might be a sponsor one day. 
but Rayos. Respect. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I recommend Rayos, but you know, if you pay me money, Prego, I got your back. <laughs> And the last one, I have mentioned her before in her old podcast, but she's got a new podcast now. I recommend sports, question mark. It's called Sports with Katie Nolan. Episode one dropped this week. Go check it out. They talk about sports, and she has funny guests, like Adam Polly of one of the greatest shows, Happy Endings, was on Back. there today. So a little bit of that, even though they... they uh, they talked ill of my Indiana Pacers and of soccer. I will, that's fine. I can deal with it. But yes, go check it out. Sports. Uh, I'm sure wherever you get your podcast, but listen to us first. All right, uh, Sam, where can they listen to us? Yeah, you guys can check us out at uh, oh, this bad habit. You can check us out <laughs> uh, Coming Clean Pod on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Check out our website at comingcleanpod.xyz. <laughs> Support us on Patreon at patreon.com backslash coming clean pod. Send us questions or anything you want at coming.clean.pod at gmail.com. Please subscribe to the podcast on Apple Pro- Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. Grab some merch, as we said before, at www.teespring.com backslash stores backslash coming clean pod. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and tell all your friends about us. And yes, it's a new year, but we always think our good friends radical something for our theme song. Cali, get down. Always remember, Sam, what do the good people have to do in 2018? Hashtag rep the rad. Worldwide peace.